Good morning, UPBOptionMillionaires.com. It is November 24, 2014. I was at the Giants game last night. My voice is shot. Uh, I don't go to Giant games often, but when I do, I make sure historic catches are made. <laughs> the Giants still lost. Awful. I was screaming at myself all night. But here we go. S&P 500 futures are higher to start the week. Let's go through some charts real quick, and then I'm going to go rest my voice. Uh, raw stores. I was talking about this for a possible megaphone topping pattern. I guess it was more of a broadening descending wedge that resulted in this, which if you had bought the calls for that, yeah, it would have worked out pretty good. Uh, instead, I was in the puts for a pullback to about the 65, 60 level over the, the short to medium term, uh, which goes to show you heading into earnings if you think an option is going to pr prove to be lucrative to the downside, get a little insurance for the upside. And that would have worked out great for you. Let's just look at the S&P 500, which remains above the Abenomics trend line. Briefly broke below it, and again, take an eraser and just erased it out of there, uh, and we're all good. <laughs> the trend remains firmly to the upside. We're not even overbought yet. Look at this. I mean, we've been overbought in the past, and then we pull back. So there's a lot of room to go to the upside with the S&P 500, and we've just been melting higher. Melting higher, which doesn't make any sense because when something melts, usually it goes lower. But uh, it's an inverted melting pattern, uh, and I can't talk. My voice is shot. Here we go, Caterpillar, triple top, pulled back. Looks like it's gonna approach here. If it breaks this long-term trend line, it's acting as a consolidating channel. We're looking at 120, 125. It's an analyst, I believe, came out last week, upgraded the stock. My voice is awful. I hate talking when I can't barely hear myself. Apple is in that long-term uh, move to the upside. Again, I'm looking for a pullback here, a blow-off kind of pullback where the stock rallies and pulls back. We kind of got that a little bit on Friday, we had that beautiful uh, burst to the upside, and then we pull back, but we're still, and again, we see this a lot with the market. We get these blow-offs and these collapses, but the whole theme of the market remains intact where we have this consolidation here for Apple. So it's kind of like, oh, no, you didn't. I got to consolidate a couple more days. But uh, yeah, I'm against the, the herd here like I was back in May of 2013, where I thought the stock was going to rally. Here we are. I think we're going to pull back a little bit here, but we'll see. Um, and some puts this week, and uh, we'll see if that comes to fruition. We have IBM, and you can look at this beautiful 170 level. Once we broke below it, we got below it. Looks like a lot of weakness is going to continue in this name. Um, I'm not going to be a buyer of puts just yet, but if we consolidate a little more here, I think the next move is going to be a sharp one to the downside. So we have Caterpillar. Uh, NASDAQ, QQQ, this, this broadening descending wedge, this is just talking about what Raw Stars a little bit ago, acted as a catapult to uh, break new all time highs in the QQQ. We had the support here at about the 91 level. Uh, earnings, you know, I haven't really gone over much earnings this week. Uh, a couple names that I am looking at, and I can barely speak. Google, uh, the 550 level is just so key here. If Google can maintain. Uh, the 550 level, I think it's poised to break out. The issue here is from a long-term perspective, we have a high, we have a lower high, and a lower high. So if Google cannot get back over 550, we're possibly looking at at least a fill of this gap. We've already broken a trend line. But again, in this marketplace, any kind of bearish trend line uh, you know, move is just you just kind of negate it because we're in we're in a, a a really spectacular bull market, probably one we'll never see again in our li lifetimes, depending how old you are. I mean, if you're six, maybe seven, or maybe eight. Uh, but the rest of us, you know, I'm 23, so it's gonna be a while. Uh, we have this beautiful uptrend. I mean, the stocks every dip gets bought. I mean, look at this. This was the uh, this was kind of the slap in your face. It's like, hi, I'm a dip. I'm a V bottom. I get bought every time, and then this V bottom comes, and everyone's like, here it is, we're in a bear market. You know, it's funny, the people who come on uh, t Twitter and CNBC, uh, they were spamming the Alibaba top all over the place. They're like they just found a way to slice bread uh, in a different fashion that saves energy and is organically uh, sound. All right, I can't, I can't even bear to listen to my voice, so I can only imagine what you were thinking. The market looks poised for continue upside. Again, just like I was pointing out with that chart for... Apple, the market might bump to the upside, might pull back, but in the whole scheme of things, we're on this upward trajectory, trajectory, trajectory. <laughs> Forget it. All right, I'm not even going to bother anymore. Everyone, have a great trading session. If I don't hear from you, have a great, happy Thanksgiving. I'll be in the chat room at Option Millionaires with my raspy voice. I don't know.
I do think some women find it hot when guys talk like this. Okay, you be here.